Hello. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph this linear inequality. And to graph the linear inequality, the first thing we want to do is you know, look to graph this in slope-intercept form. And I know this is an equation. That's an inequality. But if we can rewrite it as solve for y, then we can identify the slope and the y-intercept. So to solve for y, basically what I need to do is isolate my y variable. So I always want to undo what's happening to the variable. The first thing we always want to undo is addition and subtraction. So I can see that my 5 is being added to my variable. So I'm going to subtract a 5 on both sides. Now I have a negative y is greater than x minus 5. Now to undo multiply my variable by a negative 1, to undo that, I need to divide by a negative 1. Now remember, when we are solving for, linear in, uh, for inequalities, whenever we multiply and divide by a negative number on both sides, we had to flip the sign. That's going to be the same case. I now have a positive y is now less than this negative 1 divides into both of these terms, negative x plus 5. So now I have an equation that's in our slope-intercept form. The next thing I want to do is identify what my slope is and what my y-intercept is. Now the slope for this one can be kind of tricky because first we don't see a number there. So we have to understand that that number is a 1. So you can say slope is equal to negative 1. But remember, slope represents a ratio. So we always want to write the ratio as a fraction. So we could say negative 1 over 1. Or we could say negative 1 over 1. Or we could say 1 over negative 1. It doesn't matter which representation it works for you. They're all the same. However, I'd say as far as graphing goes, these last two are going to be probably the most useful because then you know which um, operation you're moving in a positive or a negative direction. The last thing is determine the y-intercept, which is going to be our constant, which in this case is 5. And remember, we want to write our constant as a coordinate point. So this case would be 0, 0,5. All right. So now we have 0, 0,5 as our y-intercept. So when graphing, the first thing we want to do is graph our y-intercept. So here's my y-axis. Here's my x-axis. Here's the origin, which is at 0, 0. So to plot the point 0, 5, I'm going to go up 5 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to make a nice big dot. Now the slope, remember, is the ratio for, for, between the change in the y-coordinates um, for y and the change in the x-coordinates between any two points. So let's look at this ratio. If the change in the y-coordinates between any two points was negative 1, from my y-intercept, that means the next point is going to be down one unit. And if the change in the x-coordinates is positive 1, I'm going to go over one unit. Now let's look at the next ratio. If the change in the y-coordinates between any of my two points was positive 1, that means I'd go up. And if the change in the x-coordinates between any two points was negative 1, that means I'd go up one negative or to the left one. But you can see that all three of these points all lie on the same line. Now, before you get to graphing it like I am, we want to be able to identify, am I graphing a dashed or a solid line? Is my line going to be a part of the solution or not? If it's dashed, it's not a part of the solution. If it's solid, it is a part of the solution. So to determine that, we need to look at our inequality symbol. And since that is greater than, or even here, less than, it doesn't matter if it's less than or greater than. If it's less than or greater than, it's going to be dashed. If it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, it's going to be solid. So therefore, I'm going to have a nice dashed line. And what that means is my line is not a part of the solution. If you were to plug in a coordinate point, for instance, 0, 5, which lies on the line, that would not make the inequality true. And let's check our answer. If I say 5, that's in for my y, is less than z negative 0 plus 5, we have 5 is less than 5, which that is false. That's why the line is false. However, we want to determine, well, what about the points above and below the line? Are those true and false? So to do that, we need to test for a point that's not on the line. And the best point to test is 0, comma 0. So to do that, all I'm simply going to do, just like how I tested my y-intercept, um, y is I'll plug 0 in for y, and now 0 in for x plus 5. And what I get is 0 is less than 5. And that, however, is true. So since the point below my line is true, that means all the other points below my line will be true, and all the points above my line will be false. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph a linear inequality. Thanks.